So many of you have heard of our Rockstar indicator and have uh, purchased and used the Rockstar indicator. This indicator is, um, was the final piece of the puzzle for us that finally put it all together for a lot of traders that were trading our system but hadn't quite gotten that level of success they were looking for. And then we came out with the Rockstar and that was the, that was the key. We have a lot of traders that use it to trade our system or use it to enhance their own system. So um, uh, we are going to be talking about the very fast trade uh, will include this Rockstar indicator. On Saturday, I'm going to show you variations. In fact, I, today I may show you a couple of variations, but we'll go into more detail on those variations on Saturday. Okay? So just uh, the same disclaimer that you always hear, this information is for educational purposes only. Trading is very risky, and you may lose some, all, or more than your original investment in trading capital. Uh, only trade with capital that you can afford to lose. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay? All right, so here's the agenda. We're going to talk about why we trade a fast trade. We're going we're gonna to let you know what we're looking for when we're waiting to trade this, this trade and, and what the setup looks like and how we qualify that setup. We're going to show you placing the order on a static Superdome. We don't use Chart Trader. Um, we're going to talk about our targets and stops. We use the ATM or the Advanced Trade Management inside of NinjaTrader. We're going to talk quickly about management of the trade. And then, like I said, we'll talk about variations of the trade. And the variations of the trade make up a, a large portion of what we do in our trade room. We'll take a quick look at the 2021 trade room results, and then we'll have time for Q&A. Okay? So why a fast trade, okay? Well, when I developed this, I was having a big issue with my emotions. And I didn't have a real strong handle on how to manage my emotions. So I decided to come up with something where emotion management was either unnecessary or it was greatly reduced. So I felt like if I could get in and out of a trade quickly, then I didn't have to worry about the emotion part anymore, which is what I had struggled with for so many years. And when I say struggled, I mean failed at management for so many years. Um, we're going to lower our exposure. It's really important to understand that as soon as you put on a trade and you now have money in the markets, that trade is exposed, that money is exposed to all the influences that come into the market nowadays. And, and in this day and age, it's a lot of influences and they come in very quickly and unannounced. So anything can happen at any time. So these fast trades, if we can get in and out before something unforeseen happens then we've we've really lowered our exposure to of our uh, of our um, trading funds that are just sitting out there in the market waiting for some shark to come swim by and and eat them up okay now because of this it it ends up being a very low stress type of trading which you might think would be the opposite um Anybody that's familiar with scalping, which, by the way, I don't necessarily, I don't really consider myself a scalper. I never have. Because scalpers jump in and out of trades very quickly. And they've got to have, they've got to have a lot of endurance. And they've got to be really on it all the time. And, and so that can be quite stressful and quite exhausting. So when you're a true scalper, you're jumping in and out of trades very quickly all day long. And we don't do that. We have very specific 
market conditions that we're looking for. And those conditions are immediate, meaning the information that we have about the current conditions is coming in right now. All of the conditions that we're measuring, we're measuring right now because we're expecting a response right now. So the, the way I like to think about this or describe it is uh, like a bouncing ball. When you drop a ball on, uh, you know, you drop it from your hand, you just drop it down to what, whatever you're standing on. You can expect some sort of an immediate reaction to that, to all of the influences that are going to cause that ball to bounce, to do or do something. You know, bounce, not bounce, bounce off in a di different direction, start rolling, whatever. There's a lot of different things that can happen when you drop a ball, depending on the conditions, okay? But you expect those something to happen rather immediately. So that's what we're doing when we see our trade setups. We're looking at the current market conditions in, right now and expecting something to happen right now, not five minutes from now, okay? Because remember, you, we go back to the, the influences in the markets that can control these markets in milliseconds, okay? Now, with, with all of this, uh, uh, these uh, conditions and the fact that we're, we're looking for a very specific confluence of, ev uh, of events or, or condition, it makes it really easy to master one of our trades. We have this step-by-step -step process of qualifying our trade setups. If this, then this. If this, and then and then step two exists, then we go to step three. If three exists, we go to step four, and so on. Okay. So what are we looking for when we're qualifying our trade setups? Like I said, a very specific confluence of events or or conditions that are currently in the market, okay? So we're going to be looking at momentum. We want to see momentum so that we can anticipate exhaustion. If you've watched charts at all, and you can go pull up any type of chart, particularly a, a time-based chart, but if you look at a chart and you see Strong periods of momentum where price is just moving real hard in one particular direction. You will always notice there are areas of exhaustion after a strong push. That's because people start taking profits uh, or they, they start taking, uh, you know, some of their orders off, letting some runners go but they want to start taking some profits. That always happens after a big push, and we call that exhaustion, okay? So we read momentum so we can anticipate exhaustion. We're also reading for exhaustion, okay? So we don't just make the assumption that once momentum has reached a peak that there's going to be exhaustion. No, we're looking, we're reading the signs of, of exhaustion, and at this exact point, we're then going to go and see if the, it, that it's likely that the market makers, uh, uh, the ones that can operate in milliseconds and that, that have enough money um, and sway with the exchanges, that they can actually manipulate the markets and and the way we can understand when that's happening they they try to hide it as best they can but they still have to process orders very quickly and and they have these supercomputers and they have this high speed internet and they have the ability because maybe their computers are inside the exchanges or next to the exchanges or whatever they have the ability to process their orders much, much more quickly than you and I can, us retail traders. 
So we want to read when it's being when those orders are being processed faster than it's likely that you and I can do it. So we want to know when these people are manipulating the market. So what happens is we'll see these manipulations. We're able to tell for the most part, and I'll show you that coming up here. But what happens is a lot of people aren't seeing it quite yet. So you get a lot of churning of volume. So if people ask me sometimes why I don't watch volume, and I do watch volume. I just want to watch a specific type of volume. And every single bar we're watching, we're reading every tick of volume that comes into that bar as it's coming into the bar because the, there is no better information than what's coming in right now. So we read every single tick, whether it's a buy tick or a sell tick. We're going to read every single tick so that we can understand how those ticks are coming into the bar. Okay, is it mostly buying and some selling? Is it mostly selling and some buying? Or are the ticks coming in at a rate where it looks like the buyers and sellers are kind of fighting with each other? Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So we're also looking at the bars themselves. It's very easy that the, the whole reason that these candlesticks have been created, and we call them bars, but they're candlesticks, to make trading very visual for us and make it trading charts easier to understand. And there's a lot of information looking at the types of bars that happen on the current bar and maybe the previous couple of bars we want to see, again, we're measuring momentum so we can um, uh, anticipate exhaustion. The size of these bars and the types of bars that we get are a big indicator on what's about to happen. Okay, And then we're also doing what everybody else does, and we're looking at areas of support and resistance. When price becomes, when we have strong momentum and price is becoming exhausted, and then it slams into an area of support or resistance, what usually happens? I mean, if you've been trading more than a couple of months, you know what usually happens. That area of support or resistance is going to be respected, at least for the short term, which is really all we're interested, right? Because we, we have a very fast trade, okay? And then the last item, and probably our... Uh, most important of all of these things, but uh, only most important because all of these other things have happened before it. But that's divergence. And for those of you that don't know, divergence is when price and something else are no longer running together. Okay, so most of the time price and momentum will flow together. You know, if price is going up, then you probably have upward momentum. Uh, but when you have divergence, you could have price going up, but momentum has actually started to change directions or has completely changed. So what happens is, and we know this because we watch it every single day, is that price will change directions and try to catch up with momentum. Divergence is huge hugely powerful trading tool if you know how to use it, okay? So, uh, again, Saturday, this is the event for Saturday. We're going to show you, in fact, you can see on this, this is a slide taken from the presentation uh, that we're going to be doing on Saturday or from one of the charts that we're going to be doing on Saturday. Um, and it shows you the, the trade, the setup, how everything happens, um, and what it looks like when you trade it on a, a trading dump, okay? So oh, I guess it's at 11 Eastern. I, I don't I guess it's at 11, maybe 11.30. I'm not sure. Go ahead and register, and we'll make sure you have the right information. All right, any questions so far before I move on? I'll, I'll stop for just a brief second in case anybody's lost or confused. Anybody lost or confused yet? You guys are awfully quiet. 
and very well behaved, I might add. Except for this guy who's typing now. You can always count on him. <laughs> TJ is one of our, our traders. No more loss than usual. He's in our trade room every day. He, he's one of the guys that keeps the trade room fun. All right. So what the setup looks like. Okay, this is something we see every day. Okay. So we're, whoops, didn't mean that to move ahead. Okay, so this, this whole setup is extremely typical. We may see this exact setup or some flavor of it four, five, six, ten times in a trading session. And when I say a session, um, our trade room session is 9 a.m. till noon the official session, I don't come on the microphone until 9.35, but uh, the room is open from 9 a.m. till noon. So we get this exact setup. So this is what the setup looks like. So what do we have here? We have price is channeling, okay? So if you look, um, where'd it go? Hold on a second. There it is. If you look here, you'll notice that price is kind of in a channel, right? And look at the size of these bars. Okay? So we're in a channel here, and price has been channeling for a little while now. For, for most of us, that just means there's not much going on. It's boring. But... You know, it could be areas of accumulation. It could be distribution. We don't really know, and for our purposes, we don't really care, okay? But we do want to see, ideally, is that area of where price is really, nothing's really going on, price is up and down. There's no real strong decisions being made about price at that point in time and then suddenly something does happen okay so we had that channel and then price breaks out of this channel all right so this channel is over here and we see this sudden up thrust so it breaks out of this channel here and up it goes all right and you'll notice the bars are a little bigger than the bars than when we were channeling, okay? Momentum begins to increase. That's what these bars are that are black and medium gray and lighter gray. Those are our, that's our mometer indicator or our momentum indicator. So we're, we're looking for, remember, an increase in momentum. You can tell when price, and you, you see it all the time on your regular charts, when price is just kind of drifting around, and all of a sudden you get three, four, five, six bars that are much bigger, and they're headed in one direction. Okay, very, you don't have a lot of big tails, big wicks on those, on those bars. Okay. And so, like I said, the bars are now becoming much larger. And the ticks start coming into them very fast. And we're looking for oops, a pullback alert. That's an indicator. That little dot right there. That dot with the two on it has more information than most people's entire trading system inside that dot. And that's where we're measuring the type of volume. Like I said earlier, we're measuring the type of volume, every single tick. And when we get a certain type of volume, we're going to 
understand that there's a lot of buying and selling going on, that the buyers were in control during the initial part of the bar, and then the sellers were sitting up near that area of, of support or resistance in this case, waiting. And that's where they were putting on their orders or had their orders, resting orders, okay? The ticks start coming in really fast. That's, the, that's our speed tick indicator. That's this little guy right here. Again, a lot of information in that little tiny indicator. That little arrow is telling us that this is most likely a manipulated bar. Okay? Now, price be starts to become exhausted. Now, remember, we read momentum because we already know that strong momentum cannot and will not ever be maintained because people are going to start taking profits. But we can also read where it's likely that exhaustion is setting in. So you'll see that, that, uh, that pink outline on the bar, you have this pink outline, that's telling us that price is overbought. Okay? So we know exhaustion is setting in. So what happens when somebody is exhausted and then they run into a wall? I already told you about the buying and selling and the churning. That's that number two that dot with the number two on it. When somebody who is exhausted, a person, you, you've just run up a hill and you've given it everything you got and you're out of gas and you hit the top of the hill and you have to, and you get slammed into a wall, what's probably going to happen? You're probably going to have to take a breather. You're probably going to have to relax. That's how you have to think about this. When price slams into that area of resistance, it, it doesn't have enough strength behind it to get through that, at least initially. Again, entire trading systems are made around support and resistance like this. We just We included in ours because, remember, we're looking for a confluence of events. Now, what I'm showing you here, oh, one more. Bar opens with divergence. That's our rock star, okay? That's where we're told, okay, this is a trade setup. Go ahead and pull the trigger, okay? Now, there are some variations that you can trade this trade. These would be ideal, but they're not required for some of us in the trade room to trade this trade. All right. If you wait for the perfect trade setup, it's going to work great, but you may wait a little bit longer than some setups that may not, maybe aren't as perfect, but they still work most of the time. So we do have some rules in our trades and in, in these fast trade setups that allow you to tune them to your trading comfort levels, your trading style, your risk tolerance levels, okay? So that's one of the very cool things about this particular trading system and these fast trades that I'm talking about is you can tune it to trade it the way you want to trade it, just by tuning some of the rules just a little bit. So we're going to look at this real quick. This is what it looks like when you place a trade on one of these really fast trades. Okay, price is coming up, pushing up. It has slammed into that resistance.
Now, you'll notice I put on several trades. Watch that again. Only one of them got filled. These are all limit orders. Yeah, I put on a limit order, and then I put on two more limit orders. So for me, when I trade this, I now most people that when they're just getting started, and I recommend you only you only uh, learn how to do this trading one contract. But as you work your way up and you start getting comfortable and you start becoming more successful and you start seeing consistency and you start seeing your account growing, then you can start adding more contracts to your trade. And, and that's when you start scaling on your trade. So you notice I entered the trade here, but I put a couple of orders up here. So that in the event that that trade wanted to back up a little bit before it turned, it would pick up these orders also and then go on to target. And that happens more time than you might, than you might think. All right, so that's why it's very important to practice your trading. See, we have a tremendous edge, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But... In order to exploit that edge, you got to practice. You got to put in the work. And I was willing to do that when I came up with this. I knew it was going to take just because I found these setups. I knew they're there and they happen regularly all the time over and over and over again. But can I trade them? And at first, you first see them, you go, no, I can't trade that. It's too fast. There's no way. It's too fast. But let me try. And so I started practicing. And I started thinking, you know what? There is a way to do this. And the more I practice it, the better I get at it. To the point where now well, I can trade these without it really even thinking about it. So you saw how fast that trade was. This is this is real time. Okay? This is this is real time trading. Uh, and you can see that was about six seconds that it took for that trade to go from entry to target and out. Sometimes it could be a couple of minutes. But for the most part, we're in and out of trades really fast. So remember how low stress that is. You're in, out, and done, and now you're waiting. Your money is no longer exposed. You're not trying to get rich at this. You're trying to become a consistently winning trader. And once you've become a consistently winning trader, there is no limit to what you can do with trading. But first, before you start trying to make a lot of money, you've got to first try to become consistent. Okay? Some of these trades can be a couple of minutes long, but for the most part, they're, they're less than a minute. So our targets and stops. You'll notice that when I placed my order on that previous order, my target and my stop were automatically set. Okay, We use a five tick target and a seven tick stop. Most of the traders in our trade room have adopted my five tick target and seven tick stop, but not all of them. Some of them prefer a bigger target or bigger stops or smaller stops or whatever. That's up to you. That's something that over time, when you decide that, you know what, this is a good system, but for me, I, I have recognized that I think this particular instrument needs to be seven tick target or whatever. I think TJ's got different targets for different instruments. Um, but he didn't start out that way. He worked his way up to doing it that way. I trade a hard target. And now you got to think about this for a minute. Remember I talked about trends and how when momentum pushes in one direction for a long period of time, we have an upward trend and we're waiting, waiting, waiting. We find our opportunity and price pulls back, and that's our opportunity. Now, if I put on a trade for 
10, 20, 30 ticks. I'm expecting this point right here to be a reversal. But I don't really expect it to be a reversal. I'm expecting this trend to continue, right? Because trends do that. This is our edge right here. But my expectation is after this edge, price is going to go up. That's why I'm comfortable with this hard target of five ticks. You know, if it does this and then this, and then, you know, back up, and I only got this piece, <laughs> cool. I don't care. I don't need all the rest of this because I got my piece, the easy part. I got the easy part. And then I just sit back and relax and wait for the next easy one. Okay? So that's what makes our trading system so much more relaxed. We really, we, we ne never really stressing about trade, uh, uh, about our targets and stops. What we're doing is we're trying to build consistency and watch our accounts grow regularly. So trade management. Do I just sit on my hands when I just put on a trade? Do I just sit on my hands and hope for the best? Remember earlier I said we're looking for the conditions coming into the market right now to create a reaction right now. And if we get a condition where it's something more like this, where price is coming up, we get a confluence of conditions where we enter a trade here, and then price does this. Well, that, that's not a bouncing ball. That's a, a wet bag of cement. So what I'm going to do, instead of just sitting there waiting to see what's going to happen next, I've already decided that, well, price didn't do what I expected in that instant. Therefore, I'm going to start shortening my stop. Yeah, it's always possible for price to continue to go in your direction. It's also possible for price to go against you because the conditions that got you into the trade have now changed such that they don't even exist anymore. So I want out of that trade. So I'm going to manage my trade with my stop. I will shorten my stop. Again, because price can still go in my direction. I don't want to just bail out of the trade and take a, take a loss if I don't have to. So I'm going to start shortening my stop. And I'm going to shorten it all the way up to break even, and if possible, plus one, plus two, until, you know, it finally we, we finally squeeze down on it so much that it's either going to hit target or it's going to come back and take me out at plus one or two or whatever. We only make the stop smaller, never, ever, ever bigger. Okay, we don't use runners, we don't use trailing stops. Not to say you can't, but hopefully you've, you've seen the logic and why it doesn't really make sense to us to do that. We're not counting on a reversal. Okay, so here's a variation. And for those of you that are, are just visiting with us, maybe it's your first time here, uh, this is a variation of the, of the trade I just showed you. This is actually a trade we take in the room much more often. Can you tell me what's different? Those of you that are in the trade room, you see it immediately. Those of you that know, somebody that's not necessarily familiar with what we do here, can you tell me what's different on this chart versus the one we looked at a little while ago? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? No resistance. Exactly. Exactly. It's naked. This is our naked rock star. Naked rock star. And we call it naked because there is no line of resistance here. 
Okay, so we're taking it without that extra piece of confluence that makes it a safer trade. So what do we do? We're going to add some levels of confluence. Okay, so again, same condition. Price is channeling. Okay, oops, that's an ugly box. Price is channeling. Bars are relatively small. Price breaks out of a channel. The bars are getting bigger. Momentum is increasing. Okay. See how we got, we went from this to now straight up. Bars are getting bigger. The ticks are coming in really fast, which is this guy right here. Now, there's two conditions that must exist. These are no longer um, conditions that are optional. These conditions must exist. One or the other of these two conditions, preferably both. Okay, If we don't have a line of support or resistance, then this bar must be either overbought, which is this pink outline, or we must have this pullback alert. Preferably, you get both. Okay? Now, this would qualify as a naked rock star trade if, the bar, if this bar opens with this rock star. Okay? So that's a variation, and in fact, we get a lot more. I don't know, Marshall, are you here? I think I saw you here. We get a lot more of the naked rock star trades than the rock star trades. We no longer need it to slam into an area of resistance. Oh, I knew I saw you here. And then that bar opens with, Divergence. Marshall's our our um, our auditor and record keeper unofficially, our unofficial uh, records keeper. Uh, I'll show you some of his work here in just a minute. So here's a another variation of that setup. This was actually the one of the first pullback trades that I traded. Um, I had a uh, a uh, programmer develop this guy, this speed tick guy right here. This is where I started realizing that these pullback trades are predictable and we can and and I can foresee the setup coming enough ahead of time to where I could actually start placing the trade. So again, same conditions. Price is channeling, price breaks out of the channel. The bars are getting bigger. Momentum starts to increase. The bars are becoming larger. And, and the ticks are coming in very fast, which is the speed tick. Bars become overbought or oversold if it's a down. We trade them up or down. The bar slams into major resistance. And then this bar, this open of this bar, has to open five ticks or less from this resistance line, okay? What happened here is price came up and tagged <clears throat> this resistance line and then backed up. And then this bar opened here after. So we've witnessed that this line has value and that price hit it and bounced off of it and then opened down here. We know now that this line has value. So if we have a seven tick stop, we're two ticks on the other side of this line. So what we're hoping by shorting it here is if price backs up, 
this resistance going to help push it back in our favor, okay? All right, so let's take a look at some results. This is, this is stuff that um, uh, Marshall took from all the trades that we take in the trade room. He keeps a very involved spreadsheet on this stuff. Now, I'm going to go through this real quick because I know some people may, may think, oh, well, this is, a, this is a given, okay? These are results from experienced traders in our trade room. You're not going to get these results when you first start trading our system. It, it, you have to work really hard and practice very hard for a long time if you want to get these kind of results. Don't trade with real money. Uh, I always encourage you to never trade with real money until you've got a very high degree of confidence that the system you're trading has an edge and that you have the ability to exploit that edge regularly and consistently. And you must prove that to yourself before ever trading with live money. Okay? I don't care what system you're trading. If you're going to start trading with us, if you're trading something else, if you're trying other things, if you're trading with real money and you have not proven that you can consistently win at that trading system, you need to stop trading with real money, okay? So the results you'll see here are not indicative of results we may have in the future. This is all for education. Um, we're not making any promises. We're not express or implied. Make sure you understand that. In fact, this is so important. I'm going to leave it on these slides in the, on the left over here so that uh, you, there's no confusion, okay? So here's the data from our trade room from uh, 2020 and 2021. And Marshall surprised me with this last year. And uh, I had no idea he was doing this, but he kept all of these results. And in fact, you can see this on our website. Um, and so right down here is the, you go to our website and just go to slash results and you can see these on the site. Um, so here is the data um, that we have used. Uh, to co that we've collected, and here's what it looks like. So with that data, we've over the last two years of all of the trade setups that we trade. Remember, we have the Rockstar trade, and then we have a couple of variations of the Rockstar trade, and then we have a couple of other trades that we're not going to go over here. But uh, all combined, they come out to like 79% winning trades, which is about what gets reported to me by our trade room, the people in our trade room, uh, the people that choose to report things to me. That's about where they're, you know, they'll start out with us at, after the first couple of months, they're 60, 65%. And then over time, they work their way up to somewhere around 80% winner. This is what's reported to me. So um, if we consider this, uh, the, if these were all single contract trades um, and you took them all, which you're not going to take them all, but just the results would have been, again, single contract trades. We're looking at over $50,000 positive after taking out all the losers that we had and subtracting all the fees from all the trades. Okay. Um. Which, you know, if you, and this is what I, I, I encourage people to do, you learn with a single contract. And over time, you start adding contracts after you've, you've earned your right to trade additional contracts. You have proven that you can be consistent, okay? It's a, it's a process. All of this is a process. This is not any different than anything else you've ever gotten good at in your life. You have to work at it. So a lot of people are like, well, five ticks. You can't make any money at five ticks. Well, you're right on a single trade. But if you have a, 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 a setups that are high probability, if you practice them and work at them, then you work your way up to the bigger trades yeah, you can you can make 
uh, an income at day trading, just five ticks, okay? So don't forget, we've got this uh, event on Saturday. Uh, it's still posted up at the top. We stopped trading the NQ, uh, John, because of the volatility. We used to trade it. It used to be one of my favorites. But price is still jumping too fast. And when you only have a five tick target or stop, uh, a seven tick stop, and price is jumping five ticks at a time, it's really hard to, to account for the potential for slippage on that. So NQ used to be one of our favorites. In fact, it traded right alongside the YM all the time. And uh, so we would trade them both. But uh, we, we just don't trade it for now. I'm hoping someday that we can trade it. But, but for now, we, we don't really need to. We get lots of really good trade setups for the other instruments that we trade. All right. So I'm going to offer all of you that are here a uh, coupon that expires next week. And it'll, anything you want in our, in our store, anything and everything is 20% off. Yeah. My favorite instrument. That's an interesting question. I used to have favorites and I used to have those that were not favorite. Um, my least favorite used to be the ES uh, because it was such a slow mover. But then a couple of years ago with all of this new volatility, um, it's actually kind of one of my favorites now. So, gosh, then the CL used to be my favorite, and, and then with the new conditions, it's, it's a lot less favorite. So, gosh, I don't even have a favorite anymore. YM is a real good trader. Uh, gold is real good. Uh, I don't have a favorite anymore. They, I, I watch them all because some days we'll get lots of setups on instruments that we haven't had setups on in a couple of three, four, five days, nothing's been going on. And all of a sudden, that instrument's the one that's hitting today. So um, we use, we have six different instruments in the trade room. And, uh, uh, and on any given day, there could be a different one that'll be my favorite for that day. I want to thank you all for coming today. And hopefully we'll see you all either in the trade room very soon or uh, at our event on Saturday.